as they say. And Chris, a story from Australian researchers when, when, you know, when we have a mentally challenging task ahead of us, we might say, well, better put on my thinking cap. Scientists at the University of Sydney, at Sydney Uni, have developed an actual thinking cap. Well, not so much a thinking cap, perhaps, as an originality cap. And I'm going to steal a line out of the paper, which is beautifully written. It's in the journal PLOS One this week, and it's by um, Alan Snyder and Richard Chi. And they quote the great scientist John Maynard Keynes, who says uh, in the 1930s, the difficulty lies not with the new ideas, but in escaping from the old ones, which ramify into every corner of the mind. In other words, when we think about things... Our thought processes and experiences and the way we interpret them are influenced by the experiences we've already had. Our brains are patterned by our experiences and that makes you think inside the box. So thinking outside the box is much more difficult. But there are examples of when this happens. In certain settings, people with dementias, for example, or certain types of head injury have been known to disclose all kinds of latent talents, artistic or musical, for example, which they never knew they had when they were in their pre-diseased state. And often this damage centres on a part of the brain referred to as the left anterior temporal lobe. And this appears, because it's on the left to be the dominant hemisphere, appears to force your brain to think in a very hypothesis-driven, top-down way. And what the paper that has been explored by Alan Schneider and Richard Chee sets out to do is to test this hypothesis that your left brain is suppressing your creative right brain. So what they do is to get 60 volunteers to do some simple logic tests. And in the first example, they give them a practice run where they get them to rearrange some matchsticks to do a simple logic problem. And in this way, the person becomes familiar with solving a certain type of puzzle in a certain way. And this, unbeknown to the subject, biases their brain. So when they show them the next puzzle, they try and solve it the way they solved the previous one, unless they're open to new ideas. The way they make them open to new ideas is they use a, a small current which they pass through the head and this inhibits the left side of the brain and if they do that the person performs much better at solving this new kind of task in fact there was a 50 percent success rate in those subjects compared with the control subjects who didn't have any electrical stimulation or people in whom they activated the other side of the brain so this suggests that you've got this region of the temporal lobe which is forcing you to view the world in quite a strict way based on previous experience if you switch it off it can make you think outside the box and so perhaps you need to don this sort of electrical stimulation apparatus when you're trying to grapple with a complicated problem. I asked Alan Snyder what are you going to work on next and he said well we're sort of thinking about that so I said well why don't you apply some of your own <laughs> stimulus and maybe we'll give some more ideas and he laughed. Put on your thinking cap imagine if you could uh, patent the originality cap it'd sell like a rocket. Chris thanks very much <laughs> talk to you next week. It's a pleasure. Thank you Fran. It's 16 to 7 on RN Breakfast.